This is the second video in a series on the 12D track tools. Now once you've developed your center line off the surveyed rails and then gone through and using the super alignment string in the element mode to build your true center line which gives you real geometry both horizontally and vertically the next thing is we may want to check the slew from the surveyed rail to what we assume is, is a reasonable design on our alignment string. So we'll then use the tools either from your menu option here, slew diagram here, or alternatively from your track toolbar, which is the one at the top here, and this is the slew diagram here. So in order to run the slew, what I'm now going to do is go and switch on my alignment that I've produced. So in this view now I have, if I zoom in here, you'll see that I've got the surveyed center line, which is the yellow string in a center line style there. And I've now got my developed super alignment, which is using real geometry rather than the chords as we discussed in the previous video. So I'm going to go and give this a function name. So I'm going to call it RS zero one m l d n slew so that's standing for reference string zero one main line down and the slew option so i'm now going to go and pick on the surveyed center line so that will be the 3d string that was produced from the calc center line option i'm then going to go and choose my design alignment string is developed off those. When I do that, it auto fills in the start change, the end change, the number of vertices, and so on. Um, there is an option there to do slew and meters, which I would certainly not recommend using. And then if we hit the recalc slew and go and do a fit on that, we then get this little diagram coming up in the slew area here. Now, in a moment, I'll go through the the navigation tools up here. But just a general rundown to it first of all. Zero in our graph here is running down the center there and zero is where center line of both the surveyed and the uh, developed string would be identical. And then in the moment when we zoom in, we'll see that we've got negative and positive values here. So the red line is the center line as it, the slew occurs based on those two strings. Up here on the top of the screen we have got the curves on the right hand side of the track and down here on the bottom we've got the curves on the left hand side of the track. Now in order to have a look at these um, navigation tools first of all the pick option is basically just puts it if you like in neutral gear so that nothing none of the other tools are working. Fit is the same as any other fit in 12D it says fit the data to the view. The rest of these tools work slightly differently though from the normal 12D. So for instance if I come down here and I go and pick the zoom window I can come in pick a start point and an end point and as I pick that it immediately fills that view for me. So there's no need to pick that third option of which view you want it to happen in because obviously it doesn't, doesn't work in this case. This is a graph. The next thing is a pan. So if I'm happy to stay in that, at that zoom scale, my pan, I do one pick on that, pick once, drag my cursor and pick again. So that's a pick and release, drag, pick. Pick and release, drag, pick. And it'll stay panning until such time as I change to a different mode. We're going to do that now. The different mode I'm going to go to is this zoom in and out. And again, this works differently from other 12D icons. I pick on that. I come and pick a point somewhere, pick and release. As I then move my cursor left to right, it expands or shrinks in the horizontal. And if I move my cursor up and down, it expands or shrinks in the vertical. So if I just keep on zooming in there, you can see that what we've actually got happening here is we've got our settings in here where the 
string that we have developed off the surveyed string is giving me an amount of slew off each of these points. So 17 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 8, 5, 1. There's your zero line running along through there. And everything to the one side is to the left and to the other side is the right. And so there we have the amount of slew that we have on each of those options. Right, so if I now go into the plot strings, what we can then do is we can develop a model of the plotted strings which we can see on the screen. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say I want to do a plot of the slew offsets. So the name I'll give it is I'll call it RS01MLDN slew offsets. I'll use that same name, copy and paste it down into the model. Color of white will be fine and I'll leave a scale factor of say one in there. Now I'm going to come across here and I'm going to go and do the plot profile. So I'll go and pick on that. I'm going to go and steal that same name again, except this time instead of it being slew offsets, it's going to be slew profile. So I'll just retype that. And I'll go and copy that down into there, the red, and I'll give a distance offset of one there as well. We do have a description of each of the options down here as to what they're going to do. If I now come back and pick on the recalc slew here, that should then run through and I should have some new models up in here that I can go and add on. And I'm going to go and put in the RS01 mainline down slew offsets. And this is now showing me in millimeters the slew that I have pull this panel out of the way. You can see the slew that I've got to the left and the right hand side of the string so it's actually showing me where I've ended up in relation to the original survey with my new design string. So here it has pushed the string over by 28 millimeters at this particular point so that would be your 28 millimeters from there to there. Now that we've had a look at those slews in the view, we might actually wish to go and produce a report of those in one of two different formats. There's a simple method we can use, which is not one of the uh, track tools. If you go to report and then go down to the crossfall offset, you can then go and pick two strings in there and you get the change off the reference string. The first string that's going to report on the second string that's going to report on. Most commonly those two would be the same string. And then start and end chain to the interval you wanted to report on. And basically it'll go through and give you uh, changes, coordinates and offsets both horizontally and vertically in that report format, um, which is going to be useful for you. I'm not going to use that at the moment as it's not part of the standard track tools. Instead of that, we're going to come over to here to the export tab on our SLU panel and choose a spreadsheet template. This is a standard file that's shipped with 12D. It lives in your library, so you should be able to go and find that any time you want to. That's the template file that we're going to use. I'll then give my file name, which again is going to be the RS01MLDN uh, for the reference string 01 mainline down, and I'll put the SLU name after that. Come in here, pick on the export now. That will fire up Excel in the background. Then what I can do is come in, choose to browse my file, which is this one here. Double click on that, select read, and that data will now start to be read in, giving me the point number, the chainage, surveyed easting, northing, and RL, design easting, northing, and RL, the slew offset, the track lift at each point, bursine radius, etc., etc. And on the right hand side of the screen, there is actually showing a little diagram of how far things are to the left and the right.